Good morning and welcome to the Cannon County Chamber Connection. This is our September edition. I don't believe we've seen you last month because we were so late into July, but here we are again. And um, you know, as usual, this show is made possible by DTC Communications and we appreciate all their partnership throughout the years. And I do want to give them a shout out. Uh, they have received the Smart Rural Community Award program that they are in. And of course, this will benefit Can Cannon County through the use of broad broadband. And um, DTC is always committed to providing services that will enhance the community through technology. And if you're looking for businesses to move in or industry of any type, broadband is very important to them. And even with all of the uh, in-home schooling now, and I hope that that doesn't uh, have to be an issue unless you want to be want your children at home, but it's also helpful in that respect too. So we want to congratulate them for working hard. Uh, to be involved in something like this. And they are providing broadband every day in Cannon County. We're, we've co they've covered a lot of area and they have a little bit more to go, but that's a real plus if you're trying to entice any type of business or industry to come into your area. We just want to congratulate them. I think that's a good thing. Um, we also want to acknowledge at this time the flood disasters in, surround, in our neighboring counties of Waverly uh, and others that are going through tremendous times right now. And I know that people are very giving and they want to help. And we want to recommend that if you do that, unless you have a church or someone that you know that's providing uh, help for these people. Don't fall into the scams of people calling you on the phone and asking for things. If you want to be sure of where your money or your or what's needed, you can call the Better Business Bureau. They have a list of things that uh, the people need right now. And of course, the Red Cross is always one of the first responders in anything like this. And you can also get a hold of them and they can tell you what's needed. And if you were gonna give money, uh, you can be assured that it'll go for what you mean it to go for. Because I don't know why the scammers decide that they pick on any event, even if it's a disaster. So just be careful who you who you give information to, I guess. But we we certainly don't want you to fall victim to a scam, but we also want to help those people as much as we can. I mean, they're in good heavens. You've got Louisiana uh, is also in this predicament where um, you wake up and everything's gone. And that's the way it is with these people. So we need to keep them in mind too. I do have guests today for our show. And of course, we haven't had these this group on here in some time, but we have the Child Advocacy Center. They do a lot of good work in our area and in Rollerford County as well. And I have with us today, Amanda Hammond and also Carrie Norville. And Amanda, I'm gonna let you take it from here and kind of explain to people what Child Advocacy does do. Okay. For our community. Awesome. Okay, yes. Um, the Child Advocacy Center is a, um, an agency here in Cannon. Um, we run a couple of different programs, one of which is our Drug Endangered Children's Program. Um, that's a free program for families, a free service, um, where they uh, can contact our office or I might get a community referral from like a, a school system or just any community member. Um, family members have reached out just inquiring about the service. So any, any which way people can call our office if they think that a service would benefit them. Um, 
and it's, like I said, totally free. It's just a support to the families. Um, I usually will meet with families, talk to them, help them kind of figure out what they might need. If there's a crisis situation going on, if they need help locating like a therapy service or something, um, or even if they just need some household items or something, we have donations that we can take to families. Um, so like I said, that's a free service that we run. And then we also work in partner um, with our Child Protective Investigation Team, which is DCS, law enforcement, um, the court system, the DA. And um, what that is is just a review of cases um, that come through. Uh, we help in that process um, for severe sexual and physical abuse. Uh, we also have a space in our office where children come, a safe place to be interviewed if they are um, in a situation where there's been some sexual abuse or suspected sexual or phys severe physical abuse, where they can come to our office and be interviewed by somebody who's trained to, to do those interviews. And that way they only have to tell their story you know, to one person um, instead of having to tell what's potentially happening to them over and over again. Right. Um, so that's kind of in a nutshell the things that we do. Um, and this this panel that you meet with, uh, they're the ones who determine if there is de is definitely a need yes. in this family. So they they'll determine whether or not you know the abuse occurred um, into what it, you know prosecution or whatnot for all that. But we do help you know facilitate that process and. Um, are also we have families that might come in because of uh, like a DCS involvement, but they need um, they do they would qualify for our drug endangered program. So I could work with a non-offending parent and or caregiver, whoever has the child, um, to help provide some support to them even after the DCS case is closed and they've moved on from that. But there doesn't have to be DCS involvement for me to work with the family. Um, they just you know have to have some type of um, involvement or past drug use with anybody in the family. It could be a caregiver, grandparent, parent, aunt, uncles, you know, anybody that has exposed the child to any drug use qualifies for our program. And oh, we do okay. that for preventative. We want to prevent maybe, you know, our hope is to help the child and support the family so that the child doesn't continue. Um, you know, children, can't help what happens to them sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. They they don't have control over that, and they have a tendency to want to love their parents, you know, regardless. And they do, and and they and even you know, even when something bad has happened, the child is always going to love their parents. They do, and so that's one thing that um, that I work with teenagers and process through those emotions. It's okay to still love your parent, even though you know something bad has happened to you. Um, but we do definitely want to make sure there's support there, so mm -hmm. that you know the whatever has happened doesn't continue to happen, and then right. also that the child doesn't pick up, you know, un the bad habits, the bad habits, yeah, and, and continue with that cycle. And that happens. Uh, sometimes that it does. The child gets it, whatever it is, from the parents, and especially if it would be drug abuse because they're used to seeing it. Yes, and I do think there's something about the generational cycle of drug abuse, and so um, hopefully, you know, programs like ours help to at least, you know, lessen that some. Well, I know at Christmas time uh, you do have certain families. Do you know how many families you have at this time in Cannon County? Um, we I work with a lot of different families. I know I've, I've got, I would say, over 25 at any given time that I'm just, you know, keeping up with. And I, there's no limit to how many, so it's not like a, you're on a waiting list. You know, I don't you're turn right. people away. Right. Um, and then for Christmas, definitely last Christmas we were able to help, I think it was 21 families that got sponsored and we try to sponsor the entire family, not just one child or, you know, one person. We well, want you, to sponsor the entire family. I learned from doing the angel tree years ago that, uh, yes, you want to find out how many children are in that family and not just one that a church takes and gets thousands of things and there's three more you know that yeah and that's, maybe not so much so yeah. that's a blessing too but we definitely want to make everybody feel supported and not just single one person out right but, um, well a lot of times if it's a one parent household and maybe one of the parents is involved in the drugs or whatever you've got the other one there there are small children involved um they need they need things 
to keep house with. Yes, you're right, and um, I have gotten donations, just, you know, dish soap, shampoo, toothpaste, right. toilet paper, stuff Things like that. Things that you take yeah. for granted, yeah. Yes, and delivered that to families, and that's a blessing, um, and like you said, it is something that some people take for granted, but that's some things that other people don't have, and that becomes a stress for them, and so if providing toilet paper or dish soap helps to lessen their stress, right. I'm happy hey, to do so. <laughs> I'd be stressed if I was out of toilet paper. I don't mind it. I would be too. All right, and you do bring, you did bring someone with you, didn't we? Don't want to leave her out? Yes, ma'am. We have a, a new employee with us at the Child Advocacy Center, and Miss um, Carrie Norvell. She is our Community Education Coordinator so I can let her kind of explain a little bit about what that is. <laughs> yeah, so my job is to go out in the community and train people on the darkness to light child sexual abuse prevention training. Uh, so it's a training that we offer free to anybody in our community, parents, grandparents, um, churches, other nonprofits, schools, um, things like that. We just trained Auburn Baptist Church, their congregation, a few weeks ago. Um, and that's a training that works to empower adults on prevention, um, recognizing and responding to child sexual abuse. So we basically go through the five steps, which are to learn the facts, minimize opportunity, um, talk about it, recognize the signs, and react responsibly. Um, because unfortunately, we know that one in 10 children will be the victim of child sexual abuse before the age of 18. Uh, so our goal is to promote this training and get it in our community so we can kind of decrease those numbers. What was the number again? One in what? One in 10. That's amazing. Yes. And, and the other crazy thing is, you know, I grew up with stranger danger. My parents taught me about stranger danger. Right. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, we know that like 90% of those cases is where the victim knows their abuser. Right. So it's beyond that stranger danger. And that's something that we kind of go in detail on in that training. Like I said, we go through those steps and break them down to what that looks like in our community, what that looks like in our everyday life so that they can apply those tools in their everyday life. And many times children, if this is happening to them, they don't admit this. Right. You know, they don't come to you and say, hey, uh, most of the time they don't, maybe sometimes. But sometimes, if they're trusting of a teacher or someone in their church, they will tell them. Right, and, and like I said, um that's why it's important for us to recognize the signs because it can be hard for children to share their stories. Um, so we want to be able to recognize those signs so that we can, you know, potentially open up that conversation with them, build that trust and let them know that we're somebody that they can confide in and that we're going to get them the help that they need. It's all about the shame. They don't say anything a lot of times because they are shamed. And they, but I mean, for something that's happening to them that they can't really help. Right, exactly. Um, and we know that that's not something that they should be ashamed of. Right. Um, and that's a sad thing. But again, that, that training goes through that. It talks about how we kind of break that shame away, work on letting them know that it's not their fault, that we believe them, things like that, so that, that again, they can trust us and they, they know. Um, that it's not their fault right. and that they're going to get the help they need, that they're not alone, which is really important to let them know. Now, how do you, uh, at what point do they send you in or do you go first or how does this happen? Does Amanda have the cases and then? So that's a really great question. Um, like I said, it's a free training for anybody. So really what we've been trying to do is I've been trying to contact places to see if it's something that they're interested in. And they can either schedule it through me or through Amanda. Um, so it's not necessarily she gets a case and I go in. It's it's more of a we want to do it before it for, happens. For, to thing. prevent it, I understand. Um, yeah, so like I said, we went to Auburn Baptist Church. We, we had some teachers and a principal come out to that training as well. Um, and really, you know, anybody that's interested can contact me or Amanda and we can get it set up and right. get those people trained. And so. this, is a good, this is a good thing to know. You know, you don't want to. You don't want to go out accusing everybody you see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe you have somebody you don't like and you think, well, I think this guy is, you know. But if you kind of know, you know, what the, 
issues are that it helps, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. And, and a lot of people, they're like, when, <coughs> when do I take that step to report? Or how do I know what I have is enough? Mm -hmm. and, and that's something that we talk about as well. A lot of people don't realize that everybody in the state of Tennessee is considered a mandated reporter. So right. if you have you know, a child disclosed to you, you discover it, or you have suspicion of it, that's enough to make that call to DCS. Um, you know, people are worried, well, what, what happens to me? You can make that report anonymously. It's not your job to, you know, work the case. Right. It's our job, DCS law enforcement. <laughs> like, as, like Amanda said, we Don't work be together. your own detective here. Yeah, <laughs> you just have to have that disclosure, discovery, or suspicion to make that call, and then essentially our SIPIT team does the rest. Okay. So. Well, this is good, girls. And one thing I do want to tell you is, if you are looking for something that you can help at the holidays and everything, give them a number that they can call, Amanda, where um, they can. Our office in Cannon is 563-9915. Uh, I was about to say my cell phone number, which I would, <laughs> I'd be happy to give, but I don't know if you necessarily want to be calling my cell phone number. No. <laughs> well, or if you didn't get that, just call the chamber and I can get you in touch with them. If you feel like there's something that you would like to do as a group or individually for these families at Christmas time, they always need the help. You know, I guess I'm saying this, and really, if you need help, you need it not just at Christmas that's, time. That's a good point. And I do have, you know, people have dropped off donations on my porch. Um, just, <laughs> I'll get to work sometimes and they'll just be back, which is great because I can always find somebody to give it to. Right. Um, so if you're cleaning out your closet and you need somewhere to, to take that stuff to and you want to drop it off. Oh, I'll, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> I promise that I will find some somewhere where it can be put to you. So don't, you, Christmas is great. Uh, we just had a community member reach out to sponsor kids for back to school. Right. So we got uh, 20, I think I had 20 backpacks for kids um, to go back to school. And I know that, you know, We Care Cannon also does that too. So it was great to be able to partner and also provide, you know, stuff to families right. that didn't necessarily make it to the We Care event right. or um, maybe sibling, you know, large family, you know. So whatever the situation is, um, we're just grateful to have community members that would like to donate and help. Um, and if, if it, you don't have to feel like it's an, a material thing, you can donate your time. Um, there's always something that could be done, uh, stuffing envelopes for us, making phone, you know, whatever, right. phone calls, whatever, uh, for events that we're working on, we're, we're happy to have volunteers as well. So you don't have to feel like it's monetary. Now, what events are you having right now? Um, well, in Rutherford, there, we're about to have something called Light Up the Night. I don't know if Carrie might give just a little brief synopsis on that. Now, Canon, we, we normally do the Canon runs. Um, because of COVID, that has kind of gotten thrown off a little bit. So we're still kind of developing what what will be happening in Canon. Um, okay. But some, something for sure to come in the future. Okay. Yeah, so this. that event that she's talking about, Light Up the Night, is... Um, kind of like a gala that we do. It's on September 10th, which is a Friday evening from six to nine at Oakland's Mansion. Um, you can find a lot of this information on our Facebook page, but basically we just have um, some food, a silent auction. It's a time for people to gather. It's gonna be outside, you know, so if people want a social distance, things like that, they'll have that option. Um, but all the money that we raise from the ticket sales from the silent auction goes back to the CAC um, to help us continue to do what we do every day. Okay, so. because this is a nonprofit organization, right? Correct. Yes, and also another just plug while, while I'm sitting here, I want to say thank you to everybody who voted for us for our oh, State Farm right. Neighborhood Assist Grant uh, who helped with us with that and also time to time I contact, I have a list of people I've been contacting to send emails to senators um, to get you know certain legislation passed through. So that's a great way to help out without actually you know, given money or items, but just you you wouldn't believe how much of an impact it makes just to send an email or to to submit a vote for something. Now, I believe that the the uh, voting was a State Farm project, wasn't it? We were actually, um, what do you say? Carrie, do you want to give a little bit more? But that's more of a... 
Yeah, so um, we submitted, I believe we submitted to be a participant in this grant. So they had 2,000 people submit. We were selected uh, to be one of the top 200 out of those 2,000, which is really an honor. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had to do the, you know, the crowdsourcing of getting likes or votes to um, become in the top 40. So if we make it in the top 40, we get $25,000. So each oh. organization in the top 40 gets that. Unfortunately, we won't know that until the end of the September. <laughs> but when the leaderboard closed, I think we were at 18. So that's pretty promising. So well, good. And hopefully. that's a national thing. So it, yeah. or it wasn't just out of Tennessee. And so I think just to be in that list of candidates, I think is great. But yeah. also definitely know that we wouldn't have gotten to that 18 slot or or whatnot without support from the community. So Exactly, right. yeah. And For that sure. money will definitely go to benefit families in Canon, so. Well, that's good. That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ladies, is there anything else? Uh, where is your office located um, in Cannon County? 214 West Water Street, so it is right on the back side of the courthouse. <laughs> Where the old, if I say old jail, a lot of people know what that is. Um, but, it, but if you're not familiar, like me, I wasn't familiar when I first came here to Cannon, but it's kind of sandwiched in between the regions and that new vintage Willow Market, and then the feed store is just down the way. So right. it's kind of right along that. Okay. And are you there on daily or? I am pretty much there daily unless I'm out in the community doing stuff okay. like this or meeting with families or, you know, attending right. other things. Yeah. Right, but they can always call and leave a message. Definitely, definitely call and leave me a message. Um, and, you know, if I'm there, you want to stop by, you're more, anybody's more than welcome to. Well, all right. Well, thank you, Kate, guys. And I hope everything goes well for you all. And like I say, I will probably hear from you closer to Christmas time because... I always do something at Christmas for one of the families, so. Well, that would be so much appreciated. All right. And, uh, I'm sure definitely. that it would. <laughs> yeah, thank All you. All right. Thank you for being on, and it was nice meeting you. Yeah, it was nice to meet you, All too. Right. Thank well, you. We'll, we'll do this again. <laughs> Sounds great. Thanks. <laughs> All right. All thank right. you thank both you. for being here. Okay. We have a lot of things that are um, going on, and, of course, today, I think is going to be uh, one of the shows where we have so many of our nonprofit organizations that are going to need help. And we're glad to be of some help to them if we can, because every community needs that help. I don't care who you are, you all do. And the group that I have with me today, I have Miss Lisa Baird, and of course, many of you have know Lisa. She's been on many times. She's with the SAVE program, or otherwise known as domestic violence. And she has brought somebody with her that I haven't met before, so. Good morning, Miss Carolyn. Thank you for having us. And this is Susan Devonport, our new full-time mental health counselor at the Domestic Violence Agency <clears throat> at SAVE. So All we're right. excited to have her. We're, we're very thankful. All right. So you guys have an event coming up, too, do you yes, know? Yes, we do. Uh, we'll be having our Candlelight Vigil. This will be our fourth annual Candlelight Vigil. It's set for October 15th. It'll start at 6, at 6 p.m. Uh, and it'll be at the community center here in Woodbury. Oh, okay. And, of course, it's just a night of of us to come together and kind of uh, remember all victims of violence and trying to uh, of domestic violence and trying get education out there about what domestic violence is and everything. But also, and there'll be people there like Amanda Hammond, who was just here with Child Advocacy Center, and uh, other people in the community that will set up uh, booths and talk about their agencies and what they do, like the Head Start program and the Senior Center and things, because we all connect together and work uh, on a domestic violence to try and stop it in Cannon County. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be music there, there'll be some prayer, there'll be some testimonials from some, some, some uh, former survivor uh, victims, which are now survivors of domestic abuse, uh, and there's some powerful stories they have of their testimonies. Um, there'll be um, some food there to purchase if you get hungry. There'll also be a silent auction, up from my understanding. Uh, my board's working on all that. Um, there'll be a little bit of everything, and it's just a wonderful night to get together. And like I said, there'll be some fun, but there'll also be some serious education about domestic violence because it is such a serious issue. 
and we deal with it every day here in Cannon County. And when you refer to them as survivors, yes, many of them are? Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. And they did. They survived domestic abuse, and a lot of people don't realize when a survivor leaves, their chances of dying jump 75 percent when they walk out the door, because you've taken away that power and control that the, I'm sorry, you know I talk with my hands. I, I, I just don't want you to thump the table. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I, I, I talk with my hands. I wouldn't be able to talk, but I use my hands. But um, most uh, people don't understand, but that's a, that's a reality because you've taken away the power of control that the abuser has, and so they become more volatile at that time because they'll do anything they can to get their victim back so they'll have the power over them again. Um, you know, and it's one in three women will be victims of domestic violence in their lifetime. And like Amanda and um, the young lady that was with her were talking about sexual abuse. A lot of times that happens with uh, the children in the home of domestic violence because there's 15 million, I think it's 15 million kids every year exposed to domestic violence. And of those reported 60% physically and se or sexually assaulted. That's such a shame. It is. It's such a shame. And we deal with elder abuse because there's one in 20 seniors will be a victim of domestic violence. And it's sad. It's sad. And they need somewhere to go and somewhere for help. Yeah. And we have a wonderful agency. We have a wonderful story where a gentleman actually purchased our building and gave it to us uh, as and a shelter. And it's a nice building. Thank you. We, we want it that way. We want it to feel warm and, and make them feel like they're welcome and you know, they're safe. And, uh, That's the main thing right there. And exactly. of course you want them, you know, you don't want everybody packed on top of each right. other either, but uh, you, safety is probably one of the main issues. And, and we, we can hold up to 15 at a time in our shelter. Uh, we have wonderful staff there, court advocate, we have a shelter advocate, we have a child youth advocate now, mm -hmm. which is doing a wonderful job as well. Um, we try and meet all the needs that they need to get get on their feet and become self-sufficient, abuse-free. And all of our services to them are free because uh, we are a nonprofit 501c3. And that's another issue uh, with this is uh, when these people come to you, it's usually come as you are. Yes, ma'am. They usually have nothing but the clothes on their back. Mm -hmm. Or we've actually picked them up at the hospital with, you know, in a hospital gown. Yeah. So, you know, we get a lot of donations from the community. We, we love our community because mm -hmm. we've got a good rapport with the community. They uh, bring clothes or they'll, uh, you know, hygiene products or whatever we need. You know, they're, they're always trying to help because there is such a big need. We've got some local churches that help us, like the First Baptist Church. It, Elkins has been a good supporter of ours. Um, there's several other churches, a Methodist church with the thrift store. Um, there's individuals that help. And the, I think the county is now trying to help some, well, which good. is great. Uh, Brent Bush has been great trying to, to get the county on board to, to help with some of the lot of stuff that we have going on. Um, it's just, you know, something we deal with every day. Mm -hmm. But now we're, we're thrilled because we have, and I, I'm going to introduce her, and she's kind of shy. She doesn't want to talk. But she's <laughs> not shy at the office, so, you know, she can talk. Uh, one of our newest staff people, which is mm -hmm. Susan Devonport, our new mental health counselor, because we were having issues with trying to get counseling for our clients and having to go out of out of uh, county for that and different things. So now they don't have to. She's right in the building. So would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Talk um, a little bit what you do. I'm Susan Davenport. I work in the shelter, so I'm there basically whenever they need me from well, 8 to 4 usually. But um, they can come to me if they're in a crisis, if they're upset, if they need something, or I do um, ongoing individual therapy with several of them. I do group therapy with them where we talk about um, communication. A lot of them don't know how to communicate. They weren't allowed to, they were told they couldn't. Um, so I, I help them with self-esteem and communication and talking about trauma because some of them think, well, I've, I mean, this was just my life, it was normal. I didn't know there was anything wrong. So we talk about the trauma that they've been through and they can process that with me. And that is a lot of the issue is when they, even the reason that they got into that shape is a lot of it is mentally. Mm -hmm. Right. I can, I just can't imagine the, anybody telling me I can't talk. Well, the mental abuse is worse <laughs> than, you know, it's all bad, but you know we can we can heal the bones and the and the, and the bruises, but the mental stuff is there. It, it takes a long time to work through that and get that out, 
and help the ladies to overcome that. Right. And that's, that's you know, when you've been told you're nothing and um, nobody wants you but me and, you know, I felt sorry for you and, and the, you know, all the negatives and, mm -hmm. you know, you, you internalize those. We, we as humans, we internalize all the negatives. Mm -hmm. And then somebody gives us a positive, we don't know what to do with it. I think it's, what, 20 uh, positives to knock out one negative. Mm -hmm. Golly, guys, I think I'm too strong-willed. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to have to convince me. I'm right. <laughs> well, there's, there's a lot of women that think, you know, I, and, and we have those, and I know that Susan can contest to this, they'll mm -hmm. say, I never thought this would happen to me. Mm -hmm. And I say women because women are the majority of the victims. But there are men who are victims of violence, and we help them too just as much. Do um, very many of them come forward, though? Not, not as many uh, men will come forward because, they, again, they're you know we're big macho men, and we but they <laughs> seem to think that nobody can hurt them. Right. But uh, there's a lot of mental abuse too. Mm -hmm. But um, we help men whenever they do come because, like I said, anybody can be a victim of violence. Right. But uh, you know. It's hard to get them to feeling good about theirself. Like I said, we've had ladies that say, I never thought I would be in this situation, but an abuser can control every aspect of your life. They isolate you. They control the money. They control the the, um, the house, the car, the everything, the children, you know, and you have no control over anything. And, you know, the only thing they can do is submit, you know, or, you know, if you leave me, I'll kill you. And basically, that's what a lot of them know. And that's the reality. Or if you leave me, I'll take the kids and you'll never see them again. Now that, that would get to me well, right there. And, and abusers will use the children, or they'll use animals, you know, because we all have connections with our animals. A Go lot to of heavens, I'd had to pack up the horses and the cats <laughs> and the dogs. <laughs> exactly, that's, that's one way for them to control it. I know Susan, she can contest to all of that. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to say? How long do they, are they, well, how long can they stay at the shelter? Well, normally it's a 30 to 45 day program, but, okay. but you can't fix what they've gone through in 30 no. to 45 days. So when they come in, you know, we give them a day or two to relax and, and get their bearings. And then uh, we start working on goal, individual goals, like, okay, what would you need? Do you need housing? Do you need sh uh uh, counseling, do you need a job, what, whatever they need, and we help to try and help them. They're working their goals themselves, but we're there to assist them with whatever we can. Right. You know, resource-wise, to help them. Re and as long as they're working the program and they're trying, we'll work with them. You know, they'll they'll have, uh, you know, we've had some there three months, we've had some longer. It just depends on each situation, because housing is such a big issue. And we need more housing. Well, I guess child care is and another child, one. Yeah, it is. It's a big one. Child care is a real Because child care is not cheap. No. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, I mean, if you're just sitting there and you're buying your time, we can't help you. You know, yeah. somebody else needs that slot. And we do have four major deal breakers that if you come in, uh, there's no drugs and alcohol at all in our building, no weapons of any kind, no um, abuse of any kind, physical or verbal and uh, confidentiality. You don't tell anybody who, where you're at or tell who, who's in that building. Any one of those, and that's an automatic out because we have to keep everybody safe. Right, mm -hmm. you do. You know, but everything else, you know, we work with our, our clients and you know, because we want to help them and that's right. what they're there for. As long as they're trying to help themselves, right? And we have a good bunch right now. They're all working and trying mm -hmm. and, you know, their best to get on their feet and they need help. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got to like your job to do that, yeah. right? Yeah. I picked that. I said, honey, when, when we hired her, I said, now, first three days are mine. <laughs> <laughs> you have to come in and talk to me for three days. Mm -hmm. I just picked up. Oh, She's doing good. an awesome job. She is. And the ladies love her. And, you know, she can, you know, they can relate mm -hmm. and talk to her and get things out that they need to discuss. And, mm -hmm afraid for anybody else to hear. Yeah. Right. But well, we, that's we, a whole lot to have to consume and keep quiet, huh? It, it is, but it's it's kind of just in my nature. That's just kind of how I am to people have always kind of just come to me and told me everything and I'm just okay. <laughs> well, you and want to listen. Or not, and, huh? <laughs> 
Well, it's good you can go into that line of work. So, okay, now when is your event again? Our event is October the 15th, and it okay. starts at 6 o'clock at the community center. We'd love to have everybody come join us. Like I said, there'll be music, there'll be food, there'll be um, some prayer, there'll be some testimonials, there'll be people from the community uh, standing up and talking uh, about what they do in the community and, and services they offer. Um, you know, it's just a fun time and, and an and educational time, and it's a, we'll have a, a moment of silence for all the victims of violence, all right. and we'll light candles and everything, and we'll have our our clothesline project, which is really really neat. Mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, it's where um, victims can take any, of any age, adult, children, whatever, and we've got some really awesome uh, drawings. Uh, they take T-shirts and they paint on the T-shirts their emotions about domestic violence, oh, okay. and we hang them around the facility over there at the community center uh, during the event, and people can look at them and see kind of where they're coming from yeah. and some of the things they've been through. Well, how neat is yeah. that? And of course, we'll have, uh, um, like I said, music. You know, Jimmy Hayes will be there singing. Of course, you know, Officer I Jimmy. Know. He always comes. He does a good job. Him and Tammy sing, and some other ones from from where they go to church up there. At, okay. And. Um, Pleasant View uh, Baptist. Oh, I'm sorry, Plain View. It's about right. the three. Uh, they're coming, and I'm, I'm hoping to get Gerald Mulder and them. I don't know if they'll get to come or not, but we're going to talk to them. And if you're listening to us, maybe y'all hear that and call me. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they all, Jimmy and, and Tammy and all of them over at Plain View, always do an awesome job singing. And which reminds me, our officers are great to us. Our, we have some wonderful officers from Cannon County. And they really help us when we're dealing with domestics and trying to keep people safe. Well, good. Mm -hmm. It takes a community. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, it does. does. Well, you know, it takes a village. The, the school right. system. You know, we work with our school system. We work right. with the Child Advocacy Center, and and the the, the um, sheriff's department, police department, and everybody. And I have to give them all kudos because they really, when when it when need be, they will take care. You know, help right. they protect show up. people. Yeah, okay. they know what's going on, and they mm -hmm. they understand. Okay. Well, very good, ladies. Well, we'll probably see y'all again before Christmas, too. Oh, yes, ma'am. Because y'all need donations. Uh, these little kids come to you with nothing. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And they have to have Christmas. They do. If I don't get a Christmas present, I'm fine. But well, I, I, got to I have a feel baby. the same way. I'm got, all about the giving. Baby's got to have Christmas. I'm sorry. <laughs> they do. That's just all there is to it. All right. Is Santa allowed in? Oh, yeah. We have Santa Claus. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. He is. We'll let him come in. Mm -hmm. You just let me know when you come in Santa Claus, and we'll be there to open the gate. Well, all right. <laughs> that works. Okay, ladies, I thank you for being on. And like I say, we'll do this again, Lisa. Well, thank you, Miss Carolyn. And you right. do an awesome job. Well, thank you. And you have a great day. You too. And I hope your event goes well. Thank too. you. I hope you get to come. It'll be fun. Yeah, I'm going to try to make it. I am. Okay, now we're going to get into the event parts. And one of our, um, right now it has been so hard the last year, really, to even plan events. And of course, the Art Center is one of our big draws for our county. And um, you had a difficult year last year, too, didn't you, Beth, oh, yeah. about having any type of events? We did. Because of COVID. So this year, you're trying to make up for it, aren't you? Mm -hmm. We never know. Well, you we know, know. I, I'll say one thing about the event we're going to talk about. They're planned. If something comes up, you know, that can't be helped as far as for the COVID, because we are having a hard time controlling that, there could be changes. But right now, they're being planned, right? Mm-hmm. They are. And your big one coming up is? The big one coming up is our White Oak Craft Fair, and it's <coughs> the 11th and 12th, Saturday and Sunday. On Saturday, it's 9 to 5, and on Sunday, it's 10 to 4. And we have about 65 right now craft artists out here. And food trucks, we have a kid's tent. Um, Sue Williams, the basket maker, she's actually a, bas a master basket maker, Right, is going to be here in the hall set up showing you from the beginning to the end how a basket's made, a white oak basket's made. 
So there'll be a lot going on. It's a lot of fun. It's three dollars for parking. That goes to the Cannon County Cross Country Team, as they handle our parking. So and, and if you think, well, I can park myself. Maybe you could, but you're going to need somebody to help you to tell you where to go park because mm -hmm. it's usually packed. And it that's is, one of the is, issues is the Especially parking. Saturday is usually packed, and uh, we're hoping it will be packed yes. um, because we missed it last year. But uh, it is parking in the grass for the most part, so just so people are forewarned. Um, but it's usually a fun event. It's a lot to look at. It's great Christmas shopping. We have a lot of great artists. This you have here on the table is from one of them that will be here this year, Kay Curry. She's usually here. She's a wonderful potter. She does beautiful work. A lot of animals. Um, but some of the same ones will be here, but we have some new ones that are coming because some of the ones that usually come are not able to come this year. It's because of COVID. It's hindered their... Right. They haven't made as much this year just because they had to take another job, so unfortunately. And I have had to, they've come in and, and told me that, that they, mm -hmm. they had to get a job because... Things weren't selling. People weren't coming around to the their studios so many and everything were canceled. Canceled that they didn't have anywhere to sell their wares. So it's been it's been hard on artists. It has, and it's also been hard on the other part of the art center, which is the shows and the concerts. Yes, because so many of them had to be mm -hmm. canceled. Also, correct. Well, we are trying to have. An, we had a concert two weeks ago. Jason Brady right. with Hank Williams. Uh, but um, we're going to have the English Rain on the 18th and 19th of September. They're a Beatles tribute band, and they are really good. I don't they know if you saw them. Did you see them when they were here before? I did. Yeah. I'd seen I both of them. The there best. was another one besides them. What was the other 64? one? 64? Was it 64? They're no, good, too. I thought there was one before that. Anyway, was, most so. of these tribute bands, regardless of who they're for, mm -hmm. uh, they do a really good job. Mm -hmm. They do. So if you like the Beatles, you will love this show. Um, they're very entertaining. So you can get tickets online or you can call us. Uh, Honky Tonk Angels, which some people think is a concert, but it's not. It's actually a musical production that we, it was actually the first one that was canceled last right. year in 2020. It was scheduled for March and April, I believe. And um, so it's October 1st through the 16th. It's three girls who want to be country stars and they take off to Nashville. They're from different walks of life. I believe they actually meet on the bus going to Nashville. Okay. If but I remember this right. is a tribute to the ladies of country music. Yeah, right? there's a lot of the older country music, the ladies, yes. Yeah. Like Patsy Klein and right. that, such as that. Old uh, Loretta Lynn and I Elvis was a mere child, but I remember those. <laughs> <laughs> then we have another concert schedule. <coughs> Ultimate Oldies, October twenty second, twenty third, they're doing their seventies and eighties show. So it's not fifties and sixties like some people might think it's actually they're going to do their 70s and 80s show so it'll be i don't remember who all 50s they said, and like 60s bon Jovi and that kind of thing was my favorite <laughs> but 70s and 80s i can appreciate some of that music mm -hmm. too so and they put on a good show they they bring a huge bunch of people a lot of now when are they october 22nd and 23rd okay so that will be a Friday and Saturday on that one. The others are English Rain is a Saturday and Sunday, I believe, if I'm remembering right. On yes, eight. it is. It is. Okay. And then, of course, Honky Tonk Angels is on Friday night, Saturday night, and, and Sunday Sundays. matinee. Mm -hmm. October 1st through the right. 16th. Yep. And we have some okay. auditions coming up if you're thinking you might want to be on stage. Uh, we have some for Mr. Popper's Penguins and Freaky Friday. And those are on our website, and you need to sign up on our website because we're doing it in slots, so we just don't have a whole slew of people in one room singing. Um, but uh, you go on our website, go under shows and then auditions, and you can sign up there. And Freaky Friday is actually the first one we're going to open with in 2022. Now, so are these children's... Set. Uh, Mr. Popper's is. Mr. Yeah. Popper's Penguins. Freaky Friday is not. Okay. It is a 
It it's didn't sound season. like it, but then I wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah, it's, there was a Disney movie. You remember where the mom and the daughter switch? Oh, yes, 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 yes. It's I a little bit different from the movie, that. but that's what it is about. Okay. Uh, so next year's season, just so you know, you can go online and check it out, but we haven't got our season tickets on sale yet, but the season is going to be Freaky Friday, then Harvey, which is an old favorite. It's one of my favorite old movies. Matilda and Cinderella, those are two we missed in 2020. The Play That Goes Wrong, and then The Christmas Schooner will be a Christmas show. And right now, masks are encouraged in the auditorium when you're in the building, even when you're in the building, because of the transmission, you know. We're not gonna police it, but we do strongly encourage it. And we have masks here for anybody to wear, so. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. You have some too, don't you? Oh, yes, I do. Well, you can bring them up front and we'll give those out. Well, all right, that works that. for me. Because you're say, Cannon County Chamber. Chamber, yeah, well, it says uh, no, Cannon, Cannon County, County Tourism. Tourism. That's right, and I'm that sorry. That's fine. Yeah. They're pretty good masks yeah. too. They're washable and you can reuse them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can so use some of those. So it out. works out good. Um, these are just some of the events that the Art Center is trying to put on this year, and I certainly hope that it goes well. The White Oak has always been a very popular event. A lot of people, people from out of state come to that one. Mm -hmm. Now this year, we don't know what, what it will bring, but we'll see. But some of the other events that we have, and of course, this one's just right here. I can't believe that it's already September, but it is. And of course, the Cannon County Walking Horse Association always has their Labor Day ride, and it will happen again this year. And of course, the riders will leave the fairgrounds at 11 o'clock, ride through town, and up to the campgrounds on Short Mountain, where they will have horse shows, dancing, camping, trail riding. They have a big time, and it lasts Saturday, Sunday, and then usually, well, even on Monday, but they start coming back to town. <laughs> they start coming back to real life on Monday, so. <laughs> and then Saturday and Sunday, September 11, 12, this, the White Oak Craft Fair, it is at the Art Center, and much of it is outside. Um, tent set up, like you say, and then under the farmer's market, they also have craft booths under there, Yeah, right? we have them under the, under the pavilion, and then we have them all in the field out there. You're right. Uh, and then we have um, food trucks also. Right. I think we have a donut so, truck this time, too. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. I might get him for the car <laughs> show. <laughs> all right. Um, I don't know why I get excited about donuts. I can't eat them. But I love them <laughs> if I could. I love them. Uh, Saturday, September 11th, the Moortown Volunteer Fire Department will hold a chicken and fish fry from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Moortown Fire Department or their community center there. So if you are yearning for some fried fish or chicken, they do a good job with that. Saturday, September 18th is Fall Under the Mountain Craft Fair in Gasway, Tennessee. They will have craft booths, and of course, they also will have a fish fry. I believe that the volunteer fire department over there puts that on at their, um, at their uh, community center there also. And then Saturday and Sunday, September 18th and 19th, English Rain, Beatles Con uh, Tribute Band will be at the Art Center, 7.30 on Saturday, 2 p.m. Matinee on Sunday. Call the Art Center at 615-563-2787 or go online and get tickets for that. Saturday, September 25th is the Color of Fall Car and Truck Show. Um, the Chamber works on this all year, if you really want to know. And the registration begins from 8 till 12 noon. There'll be 70 trophies and six cash awards given out, uh, $20 per vehicle. You can enjoy DJ music, door prizes, 50-50 drawing, 
DTC will draw for a 32 inch color TV. Shelter insurance will be on site with goodies. Big Frog t-shirts will be there with our t-shirts for this year. And their Sophia's, uh, Sophia's <laughs> restaurant will be there um, at, with your food request. And they did a great job last year. You go up, order what you want. Their restaurant is right there off the square. They fix it and bring it back to you. And we may have some other um, food tents that aren't food, but we need a popcorn person. We need a donut person would be nice <laughs> for in the morning. And uh, if you need information on this, our brochures are available at this time. We have a pretty brochure. And uh, you can call me at 615-563-2222 and I'll give you all the information on that. We did get to have our cruise-ins this year so far. Mm -hmm. And the last one was this last Saturday, and we had probably about 80 cars that attended that, and it, we were glad to have them. Some cars I'd never seen before, and we always, we always like that, and we hope they come back for the car show. And that is on Saturday, September 25th. And that just about takes care of September. As far as for events, I think that the FFA at FHA at the uh, school is having a tractor pull on the 18th. Now, when you get into October, uh, and I won't go through the whole month, but there is a rain date for the car show, and that will be October 2nd. And then uh, Honky Tonk Angels, of course, starts October 1st and be weekends, Friday and weekends through the 16th. And the last cruise in of the season will be October 9th, and that will be the toy drive cruise in. And we would like everybody to bring a toy that we can give out to Cannon County kids at Christmas time. And you just heard from two of the uh, beneficiaries of that will be domestic violence and the Child Advocacy Center. And do you have anything else you want to add to that, Beth? I can't. Do you know of anything, anything else anybody's having? <laughs> Did anybody's having? I don't. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> So I have said this little thing is a butter dish. Yes, I, I've got to show you this. It's really cute. It's a butter it dish. It is cute. Whoops. That's right. Just lost his price tag here. That's another thing I might mention. The Art Center has these crafts in the Art Center uh, every day. Mm -hmm. Not all of them, but they're in the gift shop. But uh, yes, if you're looking for a gift, for somebody who has everything, you might stop by and take a look mm -hmm. at what's available right here. I'm sure you'll find something that uh, somebody in your family, a lot of pottery, and people like pottery. That's a big thing oh, yeah. now. It's very useful. I mean, yeah, they have it useful is. pottery in there. And, and if you haven't been in the store here, Short Mountain Cultures. Oh, yes, Short Mountain Cultures has great stuff in there. They do. They have fermented products, kombucha, kefir, water kefir. Um, they, they have, have some soaps. of the best sugar-free candy I've ever eaten. They do. They have a lot of vegetarian and vegan items. They have produce. There's a lot. So it's, it's a good place just to come. They They're open usually when we're open. They open right. a little bit earlier, I believe. And, the, and it's different. Mm -hmm. You can get things in there that are different. Uh, things you can't buy in any other store out here. Right, yeah. right. Any other? Okay, any other we just want to encourage, that's going to be all we have for today, but we want to encourage everybody to take care, be safe, and we hope you join us again next month.